Hey everybody, I'm Bob and this is Elliot Norris, my mustache. One of the things that I try to convey to others is uh, be you and that you're not alone. Uh, most of us have dealt with um, different things throughout our life <clears throat> and a lot of people think they have to keep it bottled up and that they, they need to take it in on themselves and sometimes it eats them because they think they're alone. So I'm going to share a couple of stories with you real quick. And maybe this will help you see that you're not alone out there. Now, I was 19 years old. Um, my girlfriend at the time was, was pregnant with my oldest daughter. And my sister, um, who's about two years younger than me, was pregnant with her first child. And she had her son about seven months, or about five months, um, before my daughter was gonna be born. Well, when he was born, he had a lot of things that were wrong with him, trisomy in 18, uh, mental retardation, he had heart murmur. Just, it, they gave him, I think it was three weeks to live. And um, I remember one night, um, I was sleeping in my room. <clears throat> and it was about, it was about four o'clock in the morning, I heard my sister screaming. And, uh, you know, it, you, you hear, the, the tone, right? It, it was it was a fearful, fearful scream. She was screaming my name, and I, I ran in, and there was there was my sister, and uh, there was her boyfriend, and there was a, there was a bassinet that my nephew was in, and she was on the edge of the bed, and she was she was crying and, and screaming my name, help me do something, help me do something. So. I quickly tried to assess the situation. I pulled the blanket back and there was my ne nephew and he wasn't moving, it didn't look like he was breathing. So I knew I, I gotta try to do CPR, which you, you put your mouth over there, you puff in a little bit of air, you put your fingers and it's 18 per minute. So I was getting ready to do CPR. And when I touched him, half of his body was cold. And I picked him up and I tried to do, I tried to do CPR. You know, and I knew I wasn't going to do anything, but I, I tried because my sister wanted my help. And so I did it, but I, I felt, I felt the warmth leave his body. And even though I knew it was futile, I still did it. <clears throat> so why am I sharing that? Because that is a part of me, but it doesn't define who I am, you know? because I, you know, try to find, try to find some part of happiness in your life. I don't, I don't want to forget it because it's, it's a part of me, you know, it's the, the good and the bad. How do you know how good something is by how bad something is? And you know that there are days that you've had that have been much worse. So let me fast forward. So it was uh, 1995. I was, uh, 21 years old. I was a young man in the army. Um, I had just gotten back from uh, jump school down in Fort Benning, uh, Georgia. I was in the 82nd Airborne Division. It was October 26th. We got a new new soldier into my unit. First day, first day. And the next day, October 27th, 1995, was uh, going to be what we called a mission assumption run. So uh, for six weeks, we'd be on a two-hour recall. All our bags were packed. If, if you get a phone call, you got two hours to make it in. Wheels up anywhere in the world, 18 hours. So the next morning, we were supposed to get together. My, my squad leader couldn't make it. And his last words were, to me were, take care of the new soldier. Take care of Radcliffe. Wow. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we're just going to do a...
Death Grip had reached out to me and they said, hey, we would love for you to try some of our wax. Um, are you up for it? And I was like, sure. You know, who's going to turn down, you know, like yeah. free great product? I mean, they said, hey, have you heard about this national championship? And I was like, yeah, I, I heard about it, but, you know, I, I don't know if I'm ready to jump into that. I mean, I haven't competed in anything other than some small online ones through, say, like Facebook. <laughs> <laughs>